Hi, I'm Dee and welcome to my channel. Today is going to be all about meal planning. Uh, wait, and also my chicken enchilada casserole. All right, let's see what we got in the freezer. <laughs> Looks like not much. I have ground beef, pork chops, Jay's friend at work brought us home some fresh salmon. How cool is that? So I think I'm definitely going to add salmon to the meal plan for sure. Now I know that there was a cookbook. Um, yeah, I got a thing for cookbooks. If you have not known, now you know. <laughs> Oh yes, here it is. Found this at a thrift store. If you don't know, I thrift store a lot until, you know, the big 2020. <laughs> but there is a bookmark here. I remembered, I remembered that I really wanted to try. And this is a really good cookbook. So glad I have this. Could you, look, this is what Jay wants to try. But there's also... A cookbook that I really want to try that a viewer a friend of mine had sent me the Louisiana real and rustic by Emma oh I can't wait to go into that yeah don't get me stuck on um, Dungeness crab season we always do a crab feed an annual crab feed here at our house and then this year our crab season was delayed and then now they're taking it back so I don't know okay so they have some really good, ooh, aha tuna steaks. I need to really have more fish in my life. But, okay, so the one I want is right here. Yes. Doesn't that look good, that salmon? That one's called the Captain Jack Salmon Rub. I'm going to request Jay to smoke that. Ooh, that is going to be good. Okay. meal plan for this week on Sunday actually the 17th we're gonna have chicken enchilada casserole and a green salad for that day don't go anywhere because I'm gonna show you how I did that Monday we're gonna go out to dinner because my husband has that day off Tuesday the 19th we're gonna try that new recipe from the Costco book and that's gonna be the Captain Jack's salmon rub and I'm gonna have my husband put that in the smoker and I'm just gonna fix a green salad because I still have fresh lettuce from the harvest from my garden. And I'm just gonna make some rice with that. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to make 
the Italian pork chops. That's one of my signature dish. My husband and mom enjoy that one. And we're just gonna make some mashed potatoes and toss some green beans. Thursday is a crazy day for me and it's gonna be a new crock pot recipe, the minestrone hamburger soup. And I'm just going to add and make some biscuits. Friday night is gonna be a grilled steak. And I'm also gonna make the twice baked loaded potatoes. And I think that is just gonna be a big meal within itself. I could add maybe a small dinner salad, but I think that's just gonna be too much for us. So I think I'm just gonna keep it with that. Saturday, I'm just gonna make it my husband's choice. These are the only items I'm gonna need from the grocery store for next week, which is green beans, a can of whole tomatoes, because the minestrone hamburger soup I have the celery, I have the carrots, I have all the other ingredients for that soup, except for one can of whole tomatoes. I have diced tomatoes. I guess I can use that instead, I'm not too sure. A small cabbage, and then I'm out of shredded Parmesan for the soup and for some of the salads. So I'm gonna add that to the list. That is my meal plan for this week. I'm using everything that I can that you guys saw in my freezer and some of the ingredients I have in our refrigerator. I'm just trying to use what we have, especially now in these times. But I also wanna try some new recipes as well. Try to see how those go. And I'll try to post those on my Instagram at DLoveyLife. Now, let's get into the chicken enchiladas. I suddenly realized that I planned this meal for Sunday Easter and well that didn't happen so I quickly made this Saturday morning instead. I used four chicken thighs I had in our freezer but I would suggest using boneless chicken breasts. Use what you have first. You could even purchase a pre-roasted chicken from the grocery store to make it even easier for this dish. I first seasoned it with a dash of salt and pepper and then about one tablespoon of taco seasoning to give it some flavor as it cooks. Add one cup of water, cover, and set your crock pot on high for five hours until done or low for eight to nine hours. I started mine at 11.30 in the morning with a goal of dinner ready by 5.30. Once I confirmed chicken was thoroughly cooked with a thermometer at 165 degrees, I laid them on a cutting board to rest. And next I took two forks to shred up the chicken. But honestly, they are so tender and juicy from cooking in the crock pot that the meat just falls and separates easily. I love cooking in my crock pot and the chicken already smells amazing. And of course with mine, I had the bone in because I used thighs instead of a chicken breast. So I carefully searched for any type of bones or little hard pieces. I diced up a quarter of a yellow onion. You can certainly use more or less of onion because we're also going to add in some chili peppers after this. Ooh, yum. This gives me a reason to use the chili peppers we froze fresh from our garden last season. If I don't have fresh peppers, I will just use a small can of diced green chili. Hot or mild is your choice. In a large skillet pan with one tablespoon of olive oil, I'll add in the onion and chili peppers to quickly saute and get the onions to a translucent appearance. Now it's time to add in your cooked and shredded chicken to the pan. Add in another one or two tablespoons of taco seasoning to the pan mixture and mix well. Open one out of the two cans of enchilada sauce, green or red, your choice. Today, I'm feeling like using green verde sauce. Pour in about one fourth of the sauce into the pan mixture and mix very well. Then cover and turn off heat. 
Lastly, we make the casserole. You can decide if you like to use corn or flour tortillas. I personally enjoy the flour, especially that's what we had in our freezer. Either one will work. Others will tell you to lay some enchilada sauce on the bottom only. Then others will suggest to use cooking spray. I have learned spraying a little cooking spray around the sides of the casserole dish first and then pouring a little enchilada sauce on the bottom of the dish works much better. That way the sides of the enchilada will not burn. Now to lay our tortillas first. I use one full tortilla, then the second tortilla I tear to pieces that will fit to cover the entire bottom of the dish. You can add three tortillas if you like more of a sturdy bottom foundation, but I like to use less on the bottom and more for the top layer. Your choice, don't make it complicated. Remember, this is an easy dish. Next, we add the entire chicken mixture on top of the laid down tortillas. Now that I think of it, you could make this with gluten-free tortillas <laughs> and or make it just a vegetable enchilada. You can do ground turkey, ground beef, or even shredded beef. Oh, the many choices. Make it your own. That's what I did. And my family loves it each and every time I make this dish. Use the rest of the first can out of the two enchilada sauce and pour over the mixture as evenly as you can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Here's the good part we've been waiting for. <laughs> because what are enchiladas without cheese, right? I mean, I had pepper jack cheese that my mom prefers. So I tore pieces of it and scattered it on top first. Next, I had some shredded jack cheddar cheese here to lightly sprinkle on top of that to end our middle layer. But of course, you can use Monterey Jack cheese. Even if you have the good cheese, use whatever you have on hand. That's the beauty of this easy and delicious casserole dish. Last layer, I used three tortillas on top. Again, you just make sure you just cover all of the mixture up. That's the goal here. You can use three tortillas, two tortillas, whatever you like. I believe I shared this in one of my weekly vlogs before. Matter of fact, I share a lot of my cooking in either these meal planning videos or my weekly vlogs. I think I need to go back and compile some of them into several cooking videos with D. Let me know in the comments below if you like to see those. Now for the grand finale. Take the second can of enchilada sauce and cover the entire layer of the tortillas with the sauce. And then you're gonna just take some more cheese and then add that on top of your sauce. Hey, if you have some cut up black olives, add that as a garnish on top. I would, but unfortunately I used it all up, which I need to add that to the never ending grocery list for the week. Ta-da! <laughs> Cover and bake for 30 minutes in a preheated 350 degree oven. And that is it. And voila! OMG, this smells amazing. It looks nice and cheesy and delicious. Ooh. Let's stand and cool for a bit before serving. You can definitely serve this with rice and beans, but for us, I used some tomatoes and fresh avocados we had on hand. Mm-mm-mm. Good. I'm on my second helping. Yep, it was good. It makes about six to seven servings. I'll be freezing half of it for later. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and click on my icon to subscribe for more variety content like this one. Now, click on one of these videos here to continue watching.